beauty of the gameplay until you get several plays of each side under your belt because mm-hmm. you need to know what the other side is going to try to do. Yes. So if if you play this constantly where one person plays the raptor and the other person plays the scientist, it'll still be a good game. Mm-hmm. But what you're really going to appreciate is once you know how both sides tick and you can preemptively guess what your opponent's going to do. Right. That's really where the magic lies in this game. It's almost a game of chicken. And and it becomes the clearly I cannot choose the wine in front of me dilemma mm-hmm. where you can see some of my cards and I can see some of yours. And I, I say to myself, well, I think you're going to go for a high card because I think right now you want action points. Mm-hmm. You don't necessarily want the ability on the card. But if I play a high enough card, I can cut back the number of action points that you'll get. Maybe right. I don't get an ability that's quite as good. But if I play my one or two, and it seems like the twos are basically the most powerful cards in the game. because They are. Cause two, they're, two and six. Right. Two and six are, are, are very good for both sides. But mm-hmm. the two, the only thing that'll go before a two is a one. So once I've seen that you've played your, your one, then I can mostly safely play my two. Yes. But then if you play your eight or nine, I've just given you a huge number of victory points. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things... That happens in the game. Sometimes you care about giving the opponent victory points. Sometimes you don't. Mm -hmm. And the times that you do care, there's no, there's no way to tell you in an X or Y situation, you will want one or the other. Right. Because neither one's actually bad. And it sort of depends on what your strategy is or the tactic tactics that you've chosen to take for that round to support your strategy Mm -hmm. will dictate what you want. Yes. And the fact that you only have nine cards means that there's a lot of, uh, management, trying to manage your cards and set yourself up for good turns. Mm-hmm. Uh, each side has a an action card, the uh, number one action card, that when they play it, they actually get to shuffle their discard pile in, which is really key if you time that right, because then your opponent won't know what you have. Exactly. It's very, it's very important. And on the Raptor side, it means you can call the baby... Mm-hmm. Baby mama can call her baby to her. Exactly. And that can be key. So there's a, a lot of interaction with the the guessing and the double guessing and the triple guessing and trying to figure out, like, nah, I think you're going to do this thing, but what if you're actually doing this thing, mm-hmm. you know? And, and one of the other things that I found particularly interesting is that there's situations in the game, and this happened in our very last game, where there was cards that I thought in our first couple plays that were basically useless. I didn't think the Jeeps as the scientist were very good. In the last game... I desperately needed them. And you because, couldn't get them. Right. I couldn't get them because I wanted to be able to move a long way down mm-hmm. the board. And I was trying to set myself up for it. But I couldn't do it because you kept you kept playing cards under me. Mm-hmm. And, and so it's very interesting in that in that you're, you're very much playing the cards the other person has played. Right. This, that, that particular aspect is to me is a very, very Bruno Fiduti trait mm-hmm. because you're very much playing the other player. Yes. You're not, there's not a bunch of game mechanics getting in the way. There's very much the, I can see what you've played and I think I know what you want to do. Mm-hmm. And that, that very human element to his games. Yeah. It's, it's really all into getting into the other player's head. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely some of that. And, and if you know, there's, especially with the Raptor, I think you want to, sometimes you want to move around the board where you, if you, if you stay stagnant as the Raptor, you, you'll die. But if you can keep moving and keep guessing, so the Raptor can move, she can move long distances. If you can go she from can. one side of the board to the other side of the board in one move. Well, if I've set up my scientists wrong, and this happened in our last game, all my scientists were one at one end of the board and all of your Raptors ended up at the other and there was no way I could win. Right. So I, I suppose we should talk about the, uh, the percentages so mm-hmm. far we have found that the game is skewed towards the scientists. I don't. And, but I think going forward, this is going to change. Right. And I think that's because the scientists are easier to play out of the box in the beginning. Yep. Yes. They have, they have raw power. They're, um, they're, they're very brute force mm-hmm. and they can bring in reinforcements, which is very nice. And that seems like that would be overpowering except for the fact that the, mother raptor is so brutally efficient in her killing yes. that she can run around the board and take out three scientists in one turn and if you are not positioned correctly you know then, then you're just going to be in a world of trouble and and at first this game does feel like it's scientist skewed but i don't think it is no i don't think it is our either. stats still lean towards the scientists mm-hmm. but we're i think we're 18 or 19 games into this 
So it's starting to go Raptor. It's starting mm-hmm. to move that direction. We've had more Raptor wins lately. It, it takes it, a little bit longer to finesse the Raptor, right. I feel. Yep. And than it I does th- to f- uh, figure out the scientist, but it makes sense if you think about it. Because like you said, the, the scientist is on brute strength. And the Raptor is, you have to finesse it a little bit more and also realize she is very efficient. Right. And there are some key cards on the Raptor side that can really help you in this. And I think two of the cards that at first I didn't really understand how to play them correctly is uh, allows you to take the mother off the board. And then you, the other player, goes about their actions. And then you have to place, you place the mother back on the board. But... It allows you to see the scientists move before you play your right. card. Right, and that's huge because you can determine then, yes. okay, well, do I want to let them do the action and I'll take action points mm-hmm. or is there an action I really want to do and I'm willing to give them some action points? Or if you both play the same card, you nullify each other's cards. So it and gives I've, you the I've opportunity. I've had to do that a you couple have. times. I've had to do and it a couple times. And there's times when that's your best choice, Yes, which is really interesting. That, mm-hmm. that disappear card is uh, it's brutal. Mm-hmm. And if you, as the scientist put yourself in a bad position where you have two scientists basically with a spot between them, then the mother raptor can just appear there and eat your face next turn. If she has the right cards. Right. If she has the right cards. Now, the other part of this is is the board position is Mm -hmm. very important. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the rock formations create sort of tunnels Mm -hmm. or like kill corridors. Sometimes the way the board will be set up, there'll be a lot of wide open lanes. Yes. And that makes it hard for the raptor because Mm -hmm. the scientists can shoot the mother a long direction they can shoot as far as they can go without hitting an obstacle right so but they can, can't move that fast no they can't move that fast the so raptor that's the, can move a lot faster so she has to take advantage on her action side yep. when it comes to that to either move out of the way right or use her disappearing trick and uh move up the board and i've had to do that a couple times where it's like hmm I'm not sure where I'm going to be on the next hand, so I'm going to take her off the board to make sure that you can't shoot me. Exactly. Right. And then the other part of the board position is that the scientists have the ability to start fires, which essentially uh, blocks parts of the board and will force the babies in a different direction. Now, the mama raptor can put those out with her tail, Mm -hmm. but it takes you time to do that. And and this game is, I think that's kind of it. We, We could go around the logic of this, but there's so many pieces that tie together to create an amazing experience there's there, the board positioning and if i do one thing you have to do another which sets mm-hmm. me up to do this thing and sometimes you have to do the thing that's completely counterintuitive sometimes you just have to sacrifice a yes. baby raptor raptor or go like well she's going to eat two of my scientists mm-hmm. so but it's going to put my other scientists in a better position yeah. to do that sometimes you need to go okay well i can block off this part of the board and that's going to be detrimental to me but mm-hmm. In the long run, I think it's better. There, there's definitely a risk reward and an opportunity cost to the actions you take here. Um, the I think the theme is actually tied in really well. I think so too. I like it. Yeah. I wasn't sure. I, sometimes you play a game and you're like, "Oh, this could be anything." This actually really fits. Mm-hmm. And I, I enjoy the fact that the sides play different, like very different. But it's it also, like you said, it goes back to the theme. If you think about it, scientists hunting raptors are going to be brute force. They bring a lot of firepower to Wait, it. People don't think the same as dinosaurs? Guns. I think it looks Jeeps, like a dinosaur. Where the <laughs> the raptor, she she is extremely efficient. Clever girl. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> what do you rate raptor, horsey avenger, on a scale of 1 to 10? Ten bandanas to one bandana. Um, this right now, I'm going to rate at a nine. A nine? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, why nine? It is one of my favorite two-player games right now. Because? Because we have played it almost, like you said, 16 or 19 times. I can't remember mm-hmm. right now. In the last two or three weeks. Right. Every game's been different. Right. And it's one of those games that I think about when I'm not playing it. And 
I'm actually thinking about, okay, what am I going to do differently? <laughs> the next time we're going to sit down and kind of build a strategy beforehand of like, here's, here's what I'm going to try. And there's very few games that make me think like that. Okay. Even when I'm not playing it. Yeah, this, so. game, this game does sort of get in your head. Mm -hmm. and, and I like the fact that the two sides are so different and that mm -hmm. there's a real satisfaction in winning as the Raptors. Yes, there is. That's been sort of one of our things is that I'll liken it to Space Hulk. When you play Space Hulk, um, and it'll depend in Space Hulk from scenario to scenario, but there's some scenarios that are basically impossible for one side to win. Mm -hmm. And and you know that going in, and you're basically just a uh, targeting dummy for the other player. Right. But on the odd chance that things go completely your way, it makes for an epic story. So like this last game that we just played, mm -hmm. and, and we always play things right before we review them. You you managed to win by getting all the raptors out. You got yes. three baby raptors out. It's the first time that's happened. The mm -hmm. raptors won by eating scientists before. I've won that way a couple times. Yeah. But it made for such a great story because you could see the narrative of how things played out and what mm -hmm. I tried to do. And the end game state was completely indicative of the mistakes I made and the good <laughs> plays that you made. Yeah. Because all my scientists were at one end of the board and you were all the way at the other and I could not get to you. Yeah, I constantly disappeared right before you thought you were in perfect position yep. to either harm me or take my babies, and I would just disappear. Yep. And you're like, what? <laughs> Did <laughs> what I, so I sound like that? You do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would put this one, I think, an 8.5. Okay. One thing I don't like is that when the mother gets shot, when you go to move her, you have to lose action points. And mm -hmm. that's just a touch, I don't want to say fiddly, I wish there was an easier way to do it, but I understand why it works that way. I just that's like my least favorite rule in the game. I think it's it, it balances things out though because oh, there it's were, necessary. It's I just, necessary. I just don't love it. I, understandable. But, but that's me. If that's my biggest complaint, that's fine. Right. Uh, this game, we'll be able to play this game forever and mm -hmm. never get tired of it. It doesn't need an expansion. No. Nope. It doesn't need anything. It's perfect. If they ever decided they wanted to make more boards with mm -hmm. some different. I'd buy those just yeah. for something, just for some something different. But there's nothing to stop you yeah, from making your own. Yeah, just something that would give you a different terrain. Yeah, just mm -hmm. I don't know something different. But this game is is so cool at its at its essence and the the way the card play works, and you definitely feel like when you're the raptor that you are trying to outsmart the hunter. Mm -hmm. Like you, it really feels that way. Yeah, it's it's just it's beautiful. I don't know if if Bruno and Bruno are. Jurassic Park fans, but I grew up with Jurassic Park, and the Raptors left an indelible mark in my brain as one mm -hmm. of the coolest movie monsters ever, because they're smart. Mm -hmm. And when you play the Raptor in this game, you feel like that. You do. It's it's just the presentation's beautiful. Uh, the price is right. This mm -hmm. thing's about thirty five bucks retail, which is not bad at all. Um, Very reasonable. Yeah, I mean, once once we once we get to a spot where we're, we're paying a dollar a play, I'm feeling like we're doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. We'll get to a dollar a play in probably two weeks. Yeah. So uh, this game is back in, in stock now in most places, which is good. It was out of stock for a while, but mm -hmm. the timing worked out. We were able to get a copy. Mm -hmm. um, so check this game out. This If you like two-player games, and this is a game you could teach to almost anybody, very simple rules. Yes. That's, it does that's reward another. multiple plays. If there's mm -hmm. a downside to it, it's the fact that you do need to play this a bunch of times before you're really going to get it. But it plays quick, and you can play three or four games the first time was, you sit down. I was going to say the nice thing is it plays so quickly yep. that it's okay. You can sit down for an hour and get three, four plays in. Yep. So I, you give it a 9 out of 10. Mm -hmm. I'll give it an 8.5. Squeaky, what do you think? Oh, she's not even in here. Never mind. Okay. We'll give it a 6.7 bones, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's a low rating, Squeaky. It is. But, but I can't recommend this enough as a two-player game. Yeah, I agree. So Raptor from Matago, designed by Bruno Faduti and mm -hmm. Bruno Cathala, highly recommended by the Cardboard and Sanity crew. Very much so. are dancing I and am. i need to go to bed and Good it's Lord. only like four o'clock it's such a sad it's such a sad state of affairs i had too much fun you did we yeah. we ran with squeaky mm -hmm. i had a killer breakfast and then we were at the store for a long time 
A lot longer than I thought. A lot longer than I planned. I I thought, oh, we'll get there. We'll probably be there maybe three hours. Mm -hmm. I think it was six and a half hours later. And we only left because.